All right, Shalom, Shalom. Today's video is going to be called No Shame in My Game. This is basically going to be about our people, you know, not being shameless of what they do and trying to play victim and such when things come about. So let me go ahead. My title. All right, so before I begin, I want to give all praises, power, glory, and thanks. To Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Kakadash. Double honors to the elders, the prophets, the apostles, the wise men, our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Salutations to the one third out there that are pushing this truth to the four corners of the earth. You know, risking their lives and freedom to do so. You know, teaching this word with authenticity and sincerity, as well as a hearty shalom to the Aquath out there listening and learning. <clears throat> so I'm going to start off in Jeremiah 3. Chapter 3, verse 1. All right. And this is about, you know, how our people act shamelessly, right? So it says, they say, if a man put away his wife, and she go from him and become another man. Shall he return unto her again? Shall not the land be greatly polluted? But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers, yet return again to me, said the owl. So basically, our people like to go out here and commit adultery because uh, you know adultery can be in many ways right um an example like us falling for christianity or us praying to false gods and things like that so we throughout the um bible you see that our people constantly do these things and then when destruction comes upon them then we like to play the victim and be like oh you know hopefully you can pray for us and that the most high saves us from these things when we're the reason why these things happen, all right? And the precept I can get for that one is Proverbs 30 and 20. And it says, Such is the way of an adulterous woman. She eateth and wiper her mouth and said, I have done no wickedness. So she commits these things, all right, and then wants to play victim and act like she hasn't done anything. That's how our people like to go about. Uh, I'm going to go to Jeremiah 6 and 2. Um, to un to explain three and one. So six and two says, I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. So he looks at us as, you know, a common delicate woman, meaning, you know, we're obedient. You know, we don't bother anybody. Delicate doesn't, uh, delicate means, you know, we don't do all these wicked things. All right. Delicate, tender, and delicate is peaceful, loving, things like that. Uh, can you give me Sirach 26 and 23? But an example I want to get uh, before I get Sirach 26 and 23 is um, Jeremiah 18, 11, and 17. And it's just, like I said, all throughout the word, you'll get examples of these things. All right. Um, so this is Jeremiah 18, 11 through 17. It says, now, therefore, go to speak to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, Thus saith Yahweh, Behold, I frame evil against you and devise a device against you. Return ye now, everyone, from his evil way and make your ways, your doings good. And they said, There is no hope, but we walk after our own devices, and we, and we will everyone do the imagination of his evil heart. So they were stiff necked, all right? And he told us many times about that, especially in Baruch 2 and 30. Um, verse 13, therefore thus saith Yahweh, ask ye now among the heathen who hath heard such a thing, sir, heard such things the virgin of Israel have done a very, a very horrible thing. Will a man leave the snow of Lebanon, which cometh from the rock of the field, or shall the cold flowing waters that come from another place be forsaken? Because my people have hath forgotten me, they have burned incense to vanity, and they have caused them to stumble in their ways from the ancient paths to walk in paths in a way not cast up. To make their land desolate and a perpetual hissing, everyone that passeth by, passeth thereby shall be astonished and wag his head. <clears throat> I will scatter them as with an east wind before the enemy. I will show them the back and not the face in the day of their calamity. So just like you, <clears throat> you got going on now, um, we're always in the midst of something, whether it's killing, murders, things like that, or things just not going right for us. And a lot of people be trying to figure out, well, why is this happening? You know, why are people always getting put down? Well, what they won't tell you is because, one, we're the children of Israel. Two, the reason these things are happening is because 
we're forsaking the covenant. All right. These covenants, uh, this covenant is important because it's a, it's like a contract. We lay, you know, we agreed on the terms. If we do good, this is what happens. If we do bad, this is what happens. So there is no way for us to play the victim because we already knew from the beginning what it was. All right. But our people have chosen to, you know, go off and commit adultery um, with these other things. And we still do it today because we don't learn. <laughs> Like, we have no shame in our game, you know? Like the title is about, we have no shame in our wickedness at all. All right, so this is Sirach 26 and 23. It says, a wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man, but a godly woman is given to him that feared Yahweh. So you can use the example of, you know, on a smaller scale, it's like, you know, if a woman just saying, oh, all men ain't good and things like that, that you can use that as an example too. But you can also use an example as our people, all right? Because we're the woman, the tender and delicate woman. And we're out here, um, we've been given into the hands of Esau Edom, right? The wicked man, all right? So you can use that as an example. When you see Esau Edom has had his way with us, if put in that terms, all right? Um, and we sit here to cry and things like that and be trying to figure out why is this happening to us. Um, and it says, but a godly woman is given to him that uh, fear uh, Yahweh. So we are to return to him, all right? But... One, we still don't understand. We're not trying to listen. We always use emotion to try to get an understanding of things. And we're just not trying to get the whole purpose of why these things are happening to us. We just want to play victim when it happens. So I want to go to Isaiah 3 and 9. And this says, um, the show of their countenance doth witness against them, and they declare their sin as Sodom, they hide it not. Woe unto their soul, for they have re rewarded evil unto themselves. Um, I can get uh, 10 and 11. It says, Say ye to the righteous, that it shall be well with him, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. Woe unto the wicked, it shall be ill with him, for the reward of his hand shall be given him. All right. So nine, simple as that, like, um, we don't care. Uh, what we do like a lot of people are happy to be out here to be you know homosexual a lot of individuals are happy to be you know wicked like to rob people things like that you can hear the people music all right and a lot of people love to listen to it robbing stealing killing you know all this hate crime that we're doing that we don't call hate crime but we just make it normal because we've been so dumbed down and think it's normal and just numb to it our people might say oh you know that's a shame that it happens and things like that. But, I mean, that's pretty much it. We don't take action to fix it, all right? But if another nation does it, then we're out here screaming bloody murder and things like that. Well, something got to change. Um, but 10, uh, basically talking about how the righteous will be rewarded for their for the things that they're doing, all right? Because when you're uh, following these laws, statutes, commandments, a lot of these fruits you get are like wisdom, knowledge, understanding, um, you know, safety. All right. You know, not evil uh, being done to you because you're following what the most I told you to do. You're able to see the whole spectrum of the world and the meaning of it. A lot of our people are small minded individuals, you know, even besides what society has done to us, because we don't like to listen. We don't like to read. Um, if somebody like me or another brother is telling us, hey, you know, we're the children of Israel, things like that. Some people might listen. Be like, oh, yeah, that's cool. And another might not. Listen, but hey, go on with that, things like that. They don't want to listen or change their ways. They're comfortable, all right? Um, so I want to jump to Proverbs real quick. Proverbs um, 11, verse 2. And it says, when pride cometh, then cometh shame, but with the lowly is wisdom. So just like the verse I just read about Isaiah 3 and 9, you know how we're, we're proud to commit these uh, abominations. Well, when pride cometh, then comes shame, you know, so... A lot of these things are going to cause destruction as well. Um, a lot of our individuals, you have to bring them down. And, um, you know, sometimes it might be death. Sometimes it might be in a certain way, you know, that will cause shame to come upon them or things like that. Um, but it says, but with the lowly is wisdom. All right. So when you're humble, all right, you know, the root word of humble is humility. All right. So when you constantly checking your spirit, constantly checking your actions, understand, but dang. I should I shouldn't have done that. I need to change my ways, you know, repent and things like that. You're you're being lowly with yourself because you're understanding, hey, I shouldn't do this, all right? 
a lot of people that are um, prideful, they were just like, oh, okay, I did it. So what if, all right? They, they don't have no shame in their actions or they don't understand the repercussions or the consequences. Um, so still in Proverbs, I want to go to 16 and 18. It says, pride goeth before destruction and in haughty spirit before it fall. So just like I was just talking about before. Um, and he gives us examples of this in the word about why our people act the way they do. All right. Just like with Sodom and Gomorrah, what happened? They got destroyed. Um, you see with individuals out here uh, when they commit crimes, you know, and our people like to be emotional. Like, why did that happen? This didn't happen to the other people. Well, one, you got to understand he's not dealing with the other nations. He's only dealing with us. Just like if you have a child. And your and your child breaks a window or, you know, get caught for stealing at school or something like that or caught cheating on a test. And he'd be like, well, the other people did it, too. Well, you're going to you might tell your child, I'm not worried about them other folks because those are not my children. I'm worried about you. And that's what's going on. Our people always want to point the finger like, well, they did it, too. But just because they did it, too, doesn't mean it's right. All right. So that's why we can destroy it and things like that. And we're not upholding the covenant. We want to be like everybody else, but we can't be like everybody else. We're different. There's a reason why he called us holy, holy to be separate. All right. Um, but yeah, this pride goes before destruction and the haughty spirit before a fall. So I want to jump to Jeremiah. Um, again, I want to go to Jer the fifth chapter of Jeremiah. Let's see. Jeremiah 5, 22 and 31. And it says, Fear ye not me, said Yahweh, will you not tremble at my presence, which have placed the sand for the bound of the of the sea by a perpetual decree, that it cannot pass it, and though the waves thereof toss themselves, yet can they not prevail, though they roar, yet can they not pass over. So our people don't fear the most high, because if you fear the most high, then you will follow his commandments. It's as simple as that. People will be like, Oh, I love the Lord, and things like that. I it's Great that you love the Lord and you understand his blessings and things like that. But it's just like you're not paying attention to his authority. You think he's just like a friend. <laughs> and it's not that. He's our father. He He's the man of war. He told you that before. He's great and terrible. He's told you that before too. You're supposed to fear him, right? And I'm going to get a verse to go with that after I read this. But 23. But this people ha have a revolting and a rebellious heart. They are revolted and gone. Their heart, basically their mind is going away from the Most High. Just like he was just talking about in Jeremiah um, 3 and 9. Uh, Salakia 3 and 1. How we're, we played the har harlot with many nations. You know, the Most High say it was. we be like, oh, thank you. And then might not be right away. We'll just go off the path again. All right. And it's only so much you can do. All right. And the Most High, he has patience. He has a lot of patience. But that patience is going to run out because, you know, <laughs> it's only so much you can do because we're throwing dirt on his name, basically. All right. Um, 24. Neither say they say they in their heart. Let us now fear Yahweh, our power that giveth rain, both the former and the latter. In his season, he reserved unto us the appointed appointed weeks of the harvest. So a lot of our people don't say, you know, let us fear the most high. All right. We look at the most high as a friend, you know, or treat him as a genie. Oh, I might be out here committing sin and things like that. But I pray that he he bless me with this car or bless me with uh, some of these things. And a lot of these things might be vanity. All right. So it might be a lot of vain things that they pray for. Khan, he is wonderfully spooky. Exactly. And our people just still continue to play the harlot like. I understand like uh, it'd be a lot of people that are committing sin and stuck in the darkness, but you want the most high to watch over you. It's not going to work like that. All right. Um, 25, your iniquities have turned away these things and your sins have withholding good things from you. So he told you straightforward, the sin and the crimes that you're committing and these things that you're doing against me is stopping me from blessing you. And he laid out the blessings in Deuteronomy 28, um, one through 14. You know, the Most High is not an author of confusion. He's going to tell you straightforward what he's, what he's going to do. You do right. All right, I'm going to bless you with this. You do wrong. This is what's going to happen. And our people seem to not get it through their head <laughs> that this is why we're in this this predicament. You know, and people be like, well, these are the uh, they two things. They might say, oh, this, is the, uh, this happened in biblical days. We're still in biblical days. Two, they don't understand that they're the children of Israel. Isaiah um, 1 and 3. All right. They don't consider, you know. They understand we're we're powerful and things like that, but 
you know, that we're special, but they don't understand the whole basis of it. All right. I'm um, 26 for among my people are found wicked men. They lay wait as he that set of snares. They set a trap. They catch men. Yeah, it's a lot of our people are out here being wicked. All right. A lot of our people are being wicked. They're killing one another. Um, they're harming one another. And then the other nations are sitting here laughing at us because not only are they depleting our numbers, we're helping them do it. All right. The mind is a strong thing. All right. Um, 27, as a cage is full of birds, so are their houses full of deceit. Therefore, they become great and waxing rich. They are waxing fat. They shine. Yea, they overpass the deeds of the wicked. They judge not the cause, the cause of the fatherless. Yet they prosper in the right of the needy. Do they not judge? Shall I not visit for these things, saith Yahweh? Shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? A wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land. The prophets prophesy. Prophesy falsely, and the priests bear rule by their means, and my people love to have it so. And what will you do in the end thereof? So a lot of our people are misled. You know, you might go to church, and the pastor might, might not even open the Bible. He might just be talking, and, you know, might say, oh, you're the blessing, and things like that. And a lot of people just be like, yeah, you know, they want words that's comforting, all right? But sometimes you don't need comforting words. Sometimes you need words that's going to straighten you out and say, hey, we've been doing wrong, man. We need to fix this. But if you come to people like that now, they're so sensitive. They think they've done no wrong. All right. Just like um, um, Sirach. No, not Sirach. Salakia. Just like um, Proverbs I just read. Was it Proverbs? No. Yeah. Proverbs 30 and 20. But I have done no wickedness. A lot of people don't like to take accountability for their actions. They just be like, oh, you know, you, you expect to receive blessings, but you don't want to be obedient or do right. You just want to be blessed. Don't have to go through trials and tribulations. You're just blessed. doesn't work like that. All right. I'm still in Jeremiah. I'm going to go to 6, um, 15 through 19. All right. And it says, thus said Yahweh. Oh, Salakia, were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore, they sh shall fall among them that fall at the time that I visit them. They shall be cast down, said their heart. So this time when he visit us, he's destroying everything. All right. Everything and everyone that's not on his side. Um, that's how the rule of Kakodesh works. And the people got to understand that it's not. He's trying to train us before he blesses us with this, with his spirit. Fully for us to understand how to act because once we get filled with the, the rule of Hakodesh, we're gonna be like a walking Bible, it's gonna be like secondhand nature for us. But He wants us to learn our ways and our doings of being holy. So, you have an individual like, um, you might have a friend, all right, your friend out here robbing, stealing, killing people, right? And you might be like, Oh, you know, I don't want to turn him in because he's my friend, you know, but the and you just go blindly to these crimes that they commit. That's horrible judgment, all right? The way the rule of HaKodesh works, that can be your friend, and he's out here killing and stealing and things like that, and you're going to check him, all right? You're going to say, hey, I'm turning you to the authorities and things like that. Nowadays, our people look at it as snitching. Why is that snitching? He's out here committing crimes and killing and harming our people. Our people don't look at things as a nation, all right? We look at people individually. Or the only time we look at something as a nation is if other nations do it to us, but we don't check ourselves inside, and that's what, what that's the issue. Division causes us to be vulnerable. And that's what our people are doing. Um, we're causing ourselves to be vulnerable by causing divisions. All right. You might see individuals selling drugs and things like that. But, oh, that's normal. But you, they're out here harming our people. So when other nations understand what we do to our own people, they might take a hand in it and say, hey, I mean, they already destroying themselves. If I throw in, you know, heroin, if I throw in this and that, it's going to make our people, you know, they already killing themselves. So, I mean, I can, I can make money while they're killing themselves. You know, I already have this hate, hatred for them. So in order for me to get back at the most, I'm just going to continue to do, destroy his people. It starts at home. We got to check ourselves first. And that's what our people don't do. A lot of them don't. A lot of them might do it, but they don't understand, um, like a solution for it. All right. Marching and doing all these things. It's not helping. That's not helping our people, all right? And when you try to tell people, hey, return to these commandments, you're like, man, look, these issues out here are far more important than us just following some words, 
And that's how people feel because they don't understand their position or how important these things are to us because the, the world don't hearken these things to us. Now, some people will tell us, hey, you know, you are the children of Israel and things like that. But they might not go far enough to tell us, hey, we did wrong in this covenant and things like that. A lot of people don't do that. All right. Um, so this is 16. Thus saith the house, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way and walk therein? And you shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. So he's saying, hey, you know, I understand they veered off, you know, but I've sent prophets, things like that to let them know, hey, stand in, the, in ye the ways and see and ask for the old paths. Our old paths was righteous. All right. Our old paths were following the commandments. We didn't think twice about uh, these commandments. We did it anyways. All right. But our people were just like, we're not going to walk therein. So it's going to keep being destroyed, all right? I'm um, 17. So this is him t talking to Jeremiah. So this is Jeremiah 6 and 17. says, also, I set watchmen over you, saying, hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we will not hearken. So hearken to the words that these um, prophets are speaking to you, all right? It was like, we don't want to listen. Uh, 18, therefore, hear ye nations and know, O congregation, what is among them. So he's talking about the children of Israel, all right? You can get Zephaniah 2 and 1, when he's, he talks about us, O nations that are not desired, which is what's going on. Um, 19, hear, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this um, people, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they, they have not hearkened unto my words, nor to my law, but rejected it. So he's telling you why he's punishing these people, our people. All right. This is why, because we didn't hearken to his words or anything like that. Uh, so I want to go to Revelations real quick. <clears throat> Revelations 18. I'm going to read verses 4 through 8. All right. And this is one of the many lovers um, that we have, with, with um, which is Babylon. All right. So this is eight, uh, 18, 4 through 8. All right, and it says, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye may uh, be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and Yahweh hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her, uh, double according to her words. And the cup which she hath filled, filled, filled to her double. How much she had glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she said in her heart, I sit as a, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is, is Yahweh, um, power who judges her. So basically, he's giving you a warning. Say, hey, Babylon that you like to hang with, hey, I'm going to destroy her. All right. <laughs> Everything that she's done to my people is going to be double her problem. All right. And she's just like you. She has no shame in her behavior. I already made a promise that I'm not going to destroy all of you. I'm going to leave a remnant. But her, I'm straight destroying her. All right. And a lot of our people will hearken to it. But, oh, hey, we need to we need to stop doing this because we need to get out of, get away from her, her, her ideologies and things like that. Cause she's going to be destroyed. We need to return to our law, lo our laws. A lot of individuals going to be like, eh, you know, um, I mean, it is what it is and things like that. And it's just how people think. All right. So the last one that I want to get is out of Ezekiel, um, 18, Uh, Ezekiel eighteen twenty nine through 32. And it says, Yet said the house of Israel, The way of Yahweh is not equal. All house of Israel are not my ways equal. Are not your ways unequal? So our, our people have a problem with everyone, including our, our father by the way he does things, instead of checking themselves. So like nowadays, our individuals out here, you know, being homosexuals or following the LGBTQ life. All right. And they like just they just like, why is the Most High punishing us for this? Or, you know, we're just trying to live our life and be happy. The Most High spoke about these things. All right, our people are using emotions instead of understanding. And he's uh, saying, are not my ways equal? Are not your ways unequal? The Most High is a perfect balance. Our ways are the problem. He's saying, you can't blame me for this. You have to blame yourselves for this. 
um, 30. Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, saith Yahweh power. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. So he's letting you know, hey, you need to stop doing this, all right? Uh, you know, or you're going to be destroyed, straight like that. Yeah, he, exactly, he too just, right? Like, our people just don't understand that. We just always point your fingers and just, just full of sin, man. And we're not supposed to be like that. Um, 31, cast away from all. From you all your transgressions, whereby you have transgressed, and make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will you die, O house of Israel? So he's like, you know, like, like stop this foolishness. <laughs> like, you're royalty. What are, what are you doing? Our ways are royal. Our thoughts, you know, we're above all nations. Why are you stooping down to these individuals? Things like that. It says, For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, saith Yahweh power. Wherefore, turn yourselves and live. He don't have pleasure in killing our people. All right, think about it. If your children are acting wickedly so bad, they become serial killers or something like that. And they're trying to come kill you or something like that. You're going to feel, you, you know, you're going to feel sorry for killing them. But it had to be done because if not, he would have knocked your head off too. You got to understand death um, to the most high, you just get put to sleep. You just take your spirit, but hey, uh, uh, we're going to try again later. All right. And that's what death is. <clears throat> you get put to sleep. Depending on how you acted, you know, because, of course, he's going to judge you off these law statues and these things that he put forth to us. But he's just putting you to sleep. You don't deserve to live right now. You're, you know, and that's another thing of another way of him being patient. All right. And, you know, giving us repentance. But a lot of people don't view death like that. A lot of people have viewed death as in like, you know, in a different way. But that's a different story. But hopefully... This lesson was edifying. Hopefully it painted a picture about how our nation acts and how we don't like to take accountability of any things. Um, before I leave, I want to give all praises, power, glory, thanks, and all honor to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Wa Abad Babal, Shalom.